Unexpectedly, the whole new classroom just exploded. Strange notes would be left on the front door of the schoolhouse. School officials reported the schoolhouse haunted. This story takes place at the Wild Plum Schoolhouse located near Plum Creek, 1944, North Dakota. March 28, 1944. Miss Rebel, the teacher, was giving out math tests to the students. It was just a regular Tuesday when suddenly everyone in the room witnessed a pail of lignite coal near the stove stir unexpectedly. Quote, then things began to happen. Lumps of coal started popping out of the pell like Mexican jumping beans, striking the walls and bounding back into the room. One of the students there was hit in the head by a piece of coal and was slightly injured. In a matter of seconds, the coal pell tipped over and started a fire in the classroom. Bookcases, a dictionary was caught on fire, window blinds were damaged. I can't imagine being in that situation, being in a very small area and then there's a fire out of nowhere. This could have turned out really horribly. Initially, the residents thought that this schoolhouse was bewitched, haunted. So the Stark County Superintendent called the fire marshal. So his name was Charles Swartz. He came to the school and observed the scene. So the case was called the Jitterbug Coal. Why was it called Jitterbug? So I googled the word Jitterbug and here's what I get. Jitterbug is a generalized term used to describe swing dancing. Coal in the classroom was popping, flying everywhere, and I guess that name stuck. Jitterbug. Two months after the incident, on April 15, the Lawrence Daily Journal published a story titled Jitterbug Coal Closes a School. Teacher and children report mysterious events. Remember that fire marshal? Well, Charles Schwartz sent that coal to scientists at universities at the Dickinson State Teachers College and the University of North Dakota for analysis. And guess what came back? Nothing to explain why this coal unexpectedly, spontaneously combusted. Hoping for answers, the fire marshal Charles, he sent the coal to the FBI. The public had questions. People were terrorized. Some of the parents didn't want their children to go to school. When you live in a small town, people talk and they want answers. So going back to the school, investigators had everyone who was in that room take a lie detector test and they all passed. And since they passed, the fire marshal believed the students. This is the part where it gets a bit creepier. The teacher, Miss Rebel, said that in mid-January, she found dozens of notes pinned on the front door of the schoolhouse. These were not your happy to go get her notes. These notes had awful written messages on them. One of them said, quote, leave or be shot. Miss Rebel was a teacher, hardworking, pulling hours just to help the students learn. And she's being terrorized by something or someone. The teacher, Miss Rebel, said this, I am bothered by the 15 notes threatening my life. I've only taught here seven months and I've never expected anything like this. Her theory was that the notes were left by a mysterious masked man who once showed up at the school. Days before the incident, the students, not the teacher, saw a masked man, six feet tall, kicking the front door of the schoolhouse. This was reported by the students. Miss Rebel came to the door to check to see what it was, but no one was there. The investigation continued, questioning people, gathering evidence. Who was responsible for this jumping coal, the jitterbug coal? Was it something paranormal? Was it a mystery man? ¿Qué está pasando en esta clase? By April 16, two weeks after the incident, some of the parents did not want the children to go back to the schoolhouse, which makes sense why they wouldn't want their kids to go to that school. However, some of the parents thought there was something else going on. You will not believe this. On April 18th, new information came into light. The state fire marshal Schwartz and special assistant attorney general Austin said that this whole thing was just a hoax. There was a fire, but it wasn't caused by something paranormal ghosts, witches. Four students confessed of starting this fire. In the article it says that the students tipped over the coal bucket using long rulers and pointers while the teacher was not looking. They snuck lumps of coal into their pockets just to start a fire and they were using matches that they had hidden in their clothes. When Miss Rebel was not looking, they threw the coal towards the windows, bookshelf, and the dictionary. There was no creepy man kicking the front door. Remember, the students report seeing that masked man, not the teacher. So they made the whole thing up. The teacher believed in the students. Why would they lie? When the teacher was not looking, the students stomped their feet under their desk to cause that sound, that fake sound of someone kicking the front door. Remember those dozens of pen notes on the front door? Well, those were written by two girls. So the authorities didn't find a motive from these four students. The case was sent to juvenile authorities, but there was no uh, record of what exactly was the result of it. Were they punished, community service, what happened? To this day, no one really knows what happened to the four students. What's remarkable is that the authorities believed the students. The authorities messed up. The authorities believed the lie detector test. Since everyone passed, they assume everyone was telling the truth. It goes to show why the lie detector test is not admissible in court. So here are some unanswered questions about the story. Did the teacher, Miss Rebel, sue the school? This wasn't a small fire. Someone could have gotten hurt. 
Did the teacher, Ms. Rebel, continue teaching, or did she leave and not come back? Why didn't the other students reveal the truth sooner? Were they protecting those four friends? When I first found this story, I really thought that something paranormal was going on, but it wasn't paranormal, it was the students. Crazy things students will go through just to get out of a test. So credit to Tracy Briggs for the story. I'll leave a link below to her article about this case. It's a really good read. Comment below what story should I talk about next? Thank you for watching, my name is Kazik Migi, and I'll see you next time. Bye!